All right, we're back on Morning Line. Thanks for joining us on this Monday. Nick Barris, along with News Channel 5 political analyst Pat Nolan, thanks for coming in on sure. such short notice. We're talking about uh, Fred Thompson, remembering the man. And uh, take some of your phone calls. We have some folks on hold, and Pat, I want more of your memories. We're going to play some clips okay. of that. But we also have a, a story we want to air. A lot of reaction to his death came in immediately last night and through this morning. And we have a, a story here that just kind of shows some of that to give you an idea of how many people were commenting on, on the death of Fred Thompson. Let's have a look. The long walk to the national spotlight for Fred Thompson began long before this appearance at the Republican National Convention. Thank you. Those who knew him say it was his big personality Thank you. that got him there. See, very few people could light up a room the way Fred Thompson did, and he did it just by being himself. You know, whether he was an actor or a lawyer or the Watergate Council or United States Senator, um, he, he, people trusted him, liked him elected him, <laughs> believed what he said. He was a very special person. Largely an outsider to politics, when he won the U.S. Senate seat last held by Vice President Al Gore, Thompson was able to connect with voters. Common sense, maybe, but it sure is in common in Washington right now. Bringing that, that down-home, folksy common sense to Washington is what made him stand out amongst his colleagues and stand out uh, to the rest of the country. U.S. Senator Bob Corker told us tonight, from the courtroom to Capitol Hill to Hollywood, his larger-than-life personality was infectious and had a way of making all of those around him strive to be better. Through his many different roles in public life, Fred never forgot where he came from. It was a sentiment echoed by Tennessee House Speaker Beth Harwell, who said Fred Thompson left an indelible mark on this state. Over his long and accomplished career, he never forgot where he came from. He was a Tennessean through and through. I am honored and proud to have known him and to have called him a friend. For Thompson, his was a long walk to the spotlight in Washington and Hollywood that he perhaps at one time could never imagine for himself. But those who knew him say it left his home state and his country better. All right, that was our reporter Jason Lamb. Mm -hmm. And it's right, that last shot you saw him before that, that final one was him on the set, I think, of Law and Order, or one of the movies that he did or TV shows. Is he from Lawrenceburg? He is. That's where he was from, Lawrenceburg. And um, yeah, the, the time he spent here, you know, for some watching and recognizing who he is, they, they recognize him more from his media work. I mean, on TV has a, an actor than as a politician. Now. I, I think that's true. I mean, I think he had careers. He certainly had a distinguished career in <laughs> law. He had a distinguished career in politics. He had a distinguished career in show business, if yeah. you will. And somebody asked me last night, I think Ben did one an interview with him, uh, well, how unusual it was for that to happen. And I said, well, I guess you could say it's unusual. I can't think of anybody directly in Tennessee that sort of went from law to politics and, and show business. I said, but... On a national level, there's Ronald Reagan. Oh, sure. He certainly did a lot of that. So it, so it, it certainly is a somewhat kindred spirits they can do with. Well, in this day and age, I'm a firm believer that if you happen to be someone that's been in movies or TV or something like that, that's a, regardless of what you really like as a candidate, that's a huge help for you. Okay? It, can be, it, can, it, it can be a big <laughs> help. It, it won't get you completely over the top. I know, but people like to vote for celebrities. And that's the bottom line. Well, they like to like, they, they first of all have to look, vote for people they yeah. know and they like. And, and, and that will give you two of those right there. Yeah, the one I think, I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Goodness gracious. Well, that's right. You know, let's, hey, let's take a phone call or two, will you? We got lines up. Let's go to Paul. Paul, good morning. Hey, good morning, Nick. Hey, Paul, what's on your mind, my friend? Hey, buddy, I'm doing good, my friend. Uh, I just like to say, Nick, you know I call in and uh, uh, several times, and I'm a I'm a uh, confessed Democrat. I was born and raised a, a, a Democrat here in Tennessee, but I want to say uh, about the uh, uh, passing of this great man. Uh, uh, he, he's a lifelong Republican, and I never agree with a lot of his politics. But he was exactly—he uh, was exactly what uh, you and, and Mr. Pat said. He was the kind of Republican that would reach across the aisle and 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 work with uh, his uh, uh, Democrat colleagues. And uh, he was a great man. He was a great man for the state of Tennessee. He loved the state, and he loved its, its people. And he tried to do everything in in his life to make this state 
the best state in America. And uh, he, he was an orange-blooded Tennessee ball, and I'm an orange-blooded Tennessee ball. And uh, even though he was a Republican and I'm a Democrat, I respect him. And uh, may he rest in peace. And, and, and my prayers go out to, to uh, him and his family. And, 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 and thank you for the call, buddy. Hey, thank you, Paul. Couldn't have said it any better. His... Um the praise for him is bipartisan across the state. Yeah. I only had one thing. He did graduate from Vanderbilt Law School. He graduated from <laughs> Vanderbilt Law School. <laughs> All right, let's see. That's right. He did. He decided he wanted to be a lawyer. And went right. that way. And, right. and then the rest of it, well, you know, what happened well, next? I, I wouldn't dispute the orange part either, but he no, did graduate sure from Vanderbilt is. Law School. Let's go to Candy. Hi, Candy. Good morning. Good morning. I just want to give sympathy to Mr. Fred Thompson's family and may Mr. Thompson rest in peace. I'm going to tell you. In the late 80s, I saw this man. I was looking for a job, and I couldn't find one. I was very, you know, upset then. But, you know, I walked up to him, and I was explaining to him, Mr. Fred gave me a job in Metro Center. If you, if you can remember, I don't know if it's still there where they make medicine, putting it and, you know, shipping it. That man... I did not know him, but his personality would live with me forever. He was the sweetest man. And for him to get me that job, even though I didn't like the job, it wasn't on him, but it was the fact that he gave me a chance. And I just wanted to call and say, I am so sorry for his passing. And it, to meet a person like that, we need people like him now in this world. He did not judge you from your color or race, anything. I'm a black woman, and that man got me that job, and I would never forget that. And I just wanted to call and uh, let you know about that. And this was in the late 80s, and I'll never forget that. Uh, that's great. And this was when he was a senator? No. Oh, no, this before, was he, he, before? Or no, he wasn't what? elected senator until, late, until 1994. Until 19, 19, so this was before, before that. Where did you see him? Where did you see him at? Uh, in Metro Center. Oh, he was just there that day, and you went to apply for the job? He had walked out, okay, and I just happened to pull up, and I asked could I talk, and I just remember him, you know. <laughs> and he's the sweetest man, has a, a grand smile, as you see, right. if anybody know him. I just wanted to let you know that. That gentleman yeah. got me hired. There you go. Okay. Hey, thank you for your call. I'm sure he did a lot of that. Great story. You know, just the way he was. I saw different things posted. There was an example. You hear this sometimes of he was a big guy, and he got on a plane, and the individual who wrote the posting was also a big guy, and there was another big guy in the line, and they were all in the coach section. <laughs> Fred got the inside seat, and when they discovered who he was, and he was senator, he was flying, you know, main, you know, commercial airfare, and uh, they came and offered him a chance if he wanted to go up to first class. He said, no, I'll stay put where I am. And he stayed there between the two other guys. I mean, I mean, that's what all of us, that's what you would expect you and I would do as well. And too often, sometimes you see people, you know, wanting or expecting special treatment. And that's not what Fred Thompson was like. No, he wasn't like that. <laughs> you know? Now, did you, you said you made a comparison in terms of someone who's potentially larger than life in the uh, political field, kind of like uh, Ned McWhorter type? Well, in terms I mean, just of a their, big guy. Their, their, their big physical presence. Ned yeah. McWhorter was that way. He, he had a big, huge physical presence. And of course, so did Fred Thompson. And, and I guess I was more used to that in the sense that as a reporter, I'm a fairly small person. I'm maybe 5'6", <laughs> yes. if I'm lucky. And interviewing people like Fred Thompson is like, you know, looking oh, up right. the mountain. And I, and I had a couple people like that. You almost said, well, let's don't do this as a stand -up. Let's sit down because you can't tell what height is. Of course, you yeah. can't tell what height is on TV anyway unless you sure. have something to judge it by. But Fred Thompson was, was, was a big guy. And... And he had a bigger-than-life personality, too. I think bigger-than-life has been used by a lot of people, and I think that's a pretty good one for him. Talk a little bit about, you know, the campaign that, you know, won him that, you know, second round after serving Al Gore's time. What, what they did and what they came up with, what he was best known for, and how that kind of set the tone for other candidates that followed with the way they dressed to present themselves commercially. Well, it was his first campaign in 94 that, that, that came up. Okay, he, he, ran, right. he ran against a guy named, in the, in the primary, named Tom Watson. And yeah. Tom Watson, as you know, is, is a very famous name of a, he's of a running PGA against the golfer golf. yeah and that name still resonates today well this guy got like 30 something percent of the vote against Thompson mm -hmm. in the primary and that kind of concerned some of the party leaders so uh, they brought Tom Ingram in on the campaign and that's where Tom Ingram decided that Fred Thompson needed to emphasize sort of his grassroots 
parts of his career, and he put him in a pickup truck. Yeah, he right, drove the, the pickup, pickup truck. truck all across the that's state. That's where he drove. He didn't arrive in a big bus or anything no, he, like that. He, he drove in a pickup he, truck. One of the, the knocks on him in politics was that he'd been a lawyer, and he'd gotten into some lobbying work, and yeah. they, they sort of tried to put him in the Gucci loafers and all that kind of stuff that goes around with some images of mm -hmm. some people when they think about lawyers and, and, and lobbyists. And Fred wanted to talk about being more of the, the down-home, uh, shucks guy, and but plain spoken. And he used that across the state, and he won the, the, the race in 1994, sort of spearheaded the Republican Revolution in Tennessee along with Bill Frist, who was elected to the Senate. Yep. Uh, the other person elected that year, and the only other statewide office we have was Don Sundquist, who was elected governor. All three of those seats were taken from Democrats. It mm -hmm. was the beginning of that. And in terms of the two Senate seats, when Fred Thompson and Bill Frist won in 1994, the Democrats have not served in the Senate from Tennessee since that time. Since That's that time. over 20 years now. So that was it right then. That was the beginning of it. That was the beginning of it. The only Democrat who served in the governor's chair since then has been mm -hmm. Phil Bredesen. Phil Bredesen. Okay. Well, we got to take a break. Of course, after Fred left, and it was you said Lamar Alexander that replaced him, mm -hmm. and he kind of followed with the folksiness with the checkered shirt, right? <laughs> well, the checkered shirt actually predates that. The checkered did it? shirt okay. came from his 1978 right. uh, well, race for governor. It, well, yeah. it, it worked for Lamar in that, and of course, the checkered shirt also came in part from Tom Ingram, who also ran that. That campaign wow. for Lamar. Yeah, good at what he does. All right, we'll take a break. Uh, let's take a break. 737-7587. If you want to jump in, any thoughts, comments about Fred Thompson? Fine. When we come back to, we're going to play some of the clips from some interviews you've done with him. Okay. Is that all right? We'll sure. be right back with more right after this. Okay.